Mental health describes a level of psychological well-being or an absence of a mental disorder. Mental health refers to our cognitive and or emotional well-being. It's all about how we think, feel, and behave. Mental health has a direct impact on academic success, and it's important to cultivate practices that support emotional well-being. When mental health is overlooked, it can have detrimental effects on the individual and the community. In this video, we're going to discuss mental health awareness. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. There are different types of mental health problems, some of which are common, such as depression and anxiety disorders, and some not so common, such as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Mental health issues have long held stigmas, despite the fact that one in five U.S. adults will suffer from a mental health condition during his or her lifetime, and countless family members and friends will be affected in the process. One in four adults lives with a mental health disorder. Mental illnesses can affect every aspect of someone's life. Some employees in the workplace may be unaware of the effects. Improving mental health awareness can help these employees better understand the gravity of these illnesses, which could lead to a workplace with more kind and empathetic individuals. Due to mental health, many employees with mental illnesses may be afraid of seeking help as they don't want to be labeled a certain way. Raising mental health awareness can give employees the confidence to seek help as they feel they're not going to be judged for it. According to the 2016 National Vital Statistics reports issued by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, nearly 43,000 deaths each year are determined to be suicides. This number increased 24% between 1999 and 2014, with rates growing in both female and male populations between the ages of 10 and 74. Suicide is now among the 10 most common causes of death. This takes into account decreasing mortality rates in other areas while suicide rates concurrently increase. A contributing factor to suicide can often be serious psychological distress, which is defined as mental health problems severe enough to cause moderate to serious impairment in social, occupational, or school functioning and to require treatment. Serious psychological distress has also been linked to higher instances of heart disease and other disorders among adults. According to statistics, 39% of college students have experienced or are experiencing significant mental health issues. Half of these issues begin at the age of 14 and 75% begin at 24. There are numerous factors that contribute to college students and their mental health. Unsurprisingly, the COVID-19 pandemic is among those factors and has made many students feel disconnected from society. Countless amounts of students are having to take on new responsibilities to support their families and to obtain their college aid degrees. Despite some caviling about the quantum, the government remains the biggest single spender in the mental health sector. While most new interventions remain isolated and confined to urban areas, it's only the public health system through large programs which can reach the rural masses. Apart from the national and district mental health programs, the National Rural Health Mission is on its way to becoming the vehicle for delivering mental health as a part of integrated primary care at the cutting edge of the public health care system. Seeing that it partners with existing private and alternative care providers in a non-threatening manner shall help such interventions synergize and succeed. Thankfully, much progress has been made in decreasing stigma in recent years. Many who previously were not willing to seek help for their struggles now are. 60% of adults with a mental illness received no mental health services in the previous year, and the average delay between onset of mental health symptoms and intervention is 8 to 10 years. While stigma continues to be a significant part of the reason for these statistics, a relative lack of access to mental health care is certainly another. In recent years, Texas has ranked 48th or 49th in the nation for the amount it spent per person on mental health care. New York mental health experts recognize that earlier intervention could result in more positive outcomes for the students. Beginning in July 2018, New York was the first state in the nation to require mental health education for all students. The overall mission of New York School Mental Health SMH program was to promote healthy social, emotional, and behavioral development of students and break down barriers to learning so the general well-being of students, families, and school staff can be enhanced in collaboration with other comprehensive student support and services. Key elements to shine a light on including the concept of self-care and responsibility for one's own mental health and wellness 
with an emphasis on the fact that mental health is an integral part of health and the concept of recovery from mental illness. Teachers and students are provided with ways to recognize signs of developing mental health problems and their opportunities around the awareness and management of mental health crisis, including the risk of suicide or self-harm. Media has been the cornerstone of previous action in the field of mental health awareness. Celebrity endorsements like the recent one by actress Deepika Padukone, who shared her experience of depression, together with succinct taglines of advertisements and content-rich narrations and documentaries, have been the mainstay of media drive so far, making evidence-based mental health information easily available to journalists and other content providers like internet portals from trusted and reliable sources like the Indian Psychiatry Society, research organizations, medical colleges, etc. through their websites is a relatively simple step. Awareness reduces negative adjectives that have been set to describe our people with a mental illness. Awareness is a form of education. The more you know, the more power you have. Knowledge is power. This power can cause a positive effect on our community. Public knowledge is important in accessing community resources. Loneliness is affecting more and more of us and has had a huge impact on our physical and mental health during the pandemic. These illnesses can be managed by treatment. We should not isolate mental illness from physical health conditions such as diabetes, blood pressure, or cancer. It has been reported that over 27% of adults over age 65 with psychological distress suffer from impairments to daily living. In addition, women of all ages were found to be more likely than men to suffer from serious psychological distress. At the very least, mental health issues affect the ability to live life to the fullest. At the worst, it may lead to fatal outcomes, either due to increased physical health risks or suicide. Mental Health Awareness Month provides an ideal opportunity for fundraising, community outreach, and holding awareness events. Groups like the National Mental Health Association, the American Mental Health Counselors Association, the Federation of Families for Children's Mental Health, and many other similar organizations work tirelessly to advocate, educate, and fundraise on behalf of those with mental health concerns. Proceeds are used in part to fund events like National Anxiety Disorders, Screening Day, and National Mental Health Counseling Week to cite just a few examples. Some individuals may argue that therapy is the easiest path for those struggling with mental illnesses, but it's far more complicated than that. Unfortunately, 67% of individuals aged 18 to 24 that suffer from anxiety or depression do not seek treatment. Although many universities offer free student counseling, there are several reasons why individuals don't reach out for help during a mental health crisis other than finances. Dr. Elena Perlman suggests four reasons why some individuals don't pursue therapy as treatment. They include, I'm not crazy, I don't have the time. My secrets need to stay secret, I'm in this alone for the long haul. However, there are plenty of reasons to attend therapy sessions. One of the main reasons is that your therapy or counseling sessions are confidential. Secondly, you're in a safe space. No one is going to judge you for not liking your roommate, your high school friend's boyfriend, or your parent's new husband. According to the American Medical Association, Texas has roughly 5.5% of the nation's psychiatrists, but 8.5% of the total population, giving us 5.7 psychiatrists per 100,000 people, the national average of 8.9 per 100,000. Many experts believe that even the national average is well below what is needed. Some have called this a public health crisis. These challenges have led to increased efforts in the last decade to integrate care, often utilizing psychologists and therapists working alongside primary care doctors to help provide team-based care to those with mental health needs. Dr. Paul Summergrad, former president of the American Psychiatric Association, astutely noted that while the economic case is a good one, there are many other important reasons to consider enhanced investment in global mental health not least of which are justice, equity, human rights, and the reduction of suffering. Handheld devices and social media can truly be game changers in the propagation of effective mental health interventions through focused amplification and not just increasing information. Let us know your opinion in the comment section down below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please click on the next video to watch for more health info. Thank you very much.